In the early 1900s, airplanes were just beginning to take to the skies. Back then, there were relatively few airplanes and more than enough airspace to hold them all. However, as time passed, the number of aircraft sharing the same airspace grew. Today, air travel is commonplace. Airplanes have become bigger, sleeker, and faster. Over the years, the number and types of aircraft changed, but some basic things have remained the same. Now, more than ever, you as a pilot must abide by the rule of see and avoid to prevent a mid-air collision. The introduction of air traffic control, or ATC, and radar has helped to alleviate some of the congestion problems. But it is still the sole responsibility of each pilot to see and avoid. Although this may seem simple enough, learning to spot and avoid other aircraft isn't always easy. For example, there are five F-4 jet fighters in this picture. Can you spot them? As you progress in flying, your eyes will eventually become trained to pick out other air traffic. In fact, you should spend about 70% of your piloting time looking for other aircraft. This technique, called scanning, involves dividing your viewing into segmented areas of about 10 degrees each. Focusing on each section for about one second allows you to keep your eyes moving, yet still enables you to easily pick out traffic. If something does catch your attention, you should identify the object before moving on to the next section. Be sure to include the entire visual area in your scan, since conflicting traffic can come from any direction. However, blind spots caused by the design of the airplane can block part of your field of vision. These blind spots will vary from one aircraft to another, depending on the location of the wings and the cockpit. For example, in a high-wing aircraft, the area directly under the airplane is blocked by the fuselage, while the wings make it difficult to see the area above the airplane. When you make a turn in a high-wing airplane, your vision is blocked in the direction you are turning. Before starting a turn, you should raise the wing slightly to clear the area, then make the turn. In a low-wing aircraft, the fuselage blocks your view under the airplane, as well as some of the area above and behind. The view downward is further restricted by the wings. When you make a turn in a low-wing aircraft, the view in the direction away from the turn is blocked. Therefore, before making any turns, whether you're in a high-wing or a low-wing airplane, you should always scan the entire area for possible traffic. This is especially true when you're near an airport. Also, during prolonged climbs in a high-wing or prolonged descents in a low-wing airplane, you should make shallow S-turns to increase your field of vision. As you're learning to fly, your instructor will have you do clearing turns before you begin any flight maneuver. These turns involve at least a 180-degree change in direction. The most common way to clear an area is to make two turns in opposite directions, each one being 90 degrees. If you do spot another aircraft, its relative position will help you determine if it presents a potential hazard to you. If the other plane appears to be at or near the horizon, then it's near your altitude. Even if the traffic isn't near the horizon, you should always keep it in sight until it is passed by, since the other pilot may decide to change altitudes. When an aircraft is on a collision course with you, its position in the windshield will barely move as it approaches. Because the plane doesn't appear to be moving, it probably won't catch your eye as easily. For this reason, it's important that you develop and use the proper scanning technique at all times. When you do find yourself near another aircraft, there are certain regulations which determine who has the right of way. These regulations not only determine the right of way for converging airplanes, but also state what types of aircraft have priority. For instance, balloons, 
gliders, airplanes towing gliders, and airships all have right of way over other powered aircraft. Any plane in a state of emergency has the right of way over all other aircraft. When two airplanes are approaching head on, both should yield to the right. When you're overtaking another airplane, the plane in front has the right of way. In this case, you should alter your course and overtake the aircraft well to the right. If an airplane is converging on you from the right, it has the right of way. Just like two cars meeting at an intersection, you must yield to the vehicle on the right and change your course to pass behind the other aircraft. During airport operations, aircraft in the process of landing have the right of way over aircraft on the ground as well as others in the vicinity. If two aircraft are approaching to land, the one at the lowest altitude is given right of way. The biggest problem with the see and avoid concept is that if your aircraft isn't seen by other pilots, they won't be able to avoid you even though you may have the right of way. You can help other pilots spot you on the ground by turning your landing lights on when you're taxiing on, across, or holding in position on any runway. In the air, turn on your landing lights when you're in the vicinity of an airport, both during the day and at night. In addition, your anti-collision lights should be on whenever the engine is running, except at times when their brightness could compromise safety. To further reduce the chance of mid-air accidents, cruising altitudes were established to keep sectors of traffic flowing in one direction, away from traffic moving in the opposite direction. These cruising altitudes apply to pilots flying under visual flight rules, as well as those under instrument flying rules. Visual flight rules, or VFR, means flying and navigating primarily with the use of outside visual references. When weather conditions restrict outside vision, VFR flight is often not possible. IFR, or instrument flight rules, apply to specially trained pilots who hold instrument ratings and are flying aircraft equipped for instrument flight. The cruising altitudes start at 3,000 feet above the ground. VFR aircraft flying eastbound on magnetic courses between 360 degrees and 179 degrees would fly at odd thousand feet, plus 500. Westbound aircraft fly at even thousand feet, plus 500. IFR traffic flies at odd or even thousand feet, depending on the direction of travel. There are also minimum safe altitudes you must adhere to in order to ensure that you have enough time to take the proper corrective action in the event of an emergency. When you're flying over uncongested areas, you must fly at least 500 feet above the surface. Over open water or sparsely populated areas, there is no minimum altitude. The only restriction here is that you cannot fly closer than 500 feet to any person, vessel, vehicle, or structure. However, regulations do say that you must always operate at an altitude which would allow you to make an emergency landing without causing undue hazard to persons or property on the ground. A larger safety margin is needed over congested areas such as towns or cities. Regulations require that you fly at least 1,000 feet higher than the top of the highest obstacle when you're within 2,000 feet of it. Large metropolitan areas pose a more serious problem because they have fewer emergency landing areas. By flying at higher altitudes than those required by regulation, you might be able to buy the extra time needed to tend to any problem which might occur. In addition, a higher altitude increases your glide distance, giving you a larger selection of emergency landing spots. Another important aspect of safety is avoiding areas protected for national security reasons. An inadvertent entry into such an area can result in your aircraft being intercepted. Careful pre-flight planning and vigilance in flight can help avoid most problems. In addition, studying the federal regulations and interception procedures outlined in the AIM prior to departure can help eliminate confusion and a potentially dangerous situation in flight. 
For example, an aircraft that is in front of you that is rocking its wings is indicating your flight has been intercepted. You must follow the intercepting aircraft. As the skies become more crowded, the skills of detecting other aircraft and avoiding potential hazards becomes increasingly important. Using these skills will help ensure enjoyable flying in the years to come.